I think it's been around five minutes, so let's just go into lesson two of module two. Okay, sounds good. I'm just taking a sip of water. Awesome. All right, so with on-page SEO, this is something that's super important that I want to start off module two with and lesson two is dwell time. Some of you guys may be familiar with dwell time. Some of you may not be, but it's super important. And let me explain why, right? If you end up going to a website you don't like, what are you going to do? You're going to exit right away. If you exit right away, then the site's not going to do well, right? That gets back into user metrics. So how does Google know if a customer is happy? They know if they share your content, if they're emailing friends, if they're you know, on your page for a long time, if they're leaving comments. All of this gives Google good signals if your website is valuable. Dwell time is a metric that calculates user engagement, session duration, and SERP CTR. So how do you measure dwell time? Well, it's a combination of those three things. And I'm going to show you how to get this information through Google Analytics. So one, sign up for Google Analytics. Two, put on the tracking code on your website. I'm assuming most of you guys already have this. Once it's on your website, if you struggle with this, just let us know. Keep in mind it can take like a half a day for it to update or a day right when you put the script on. And then you should start seeing traffic. So then I want you to go into Google Analytics I want you to click on audience in the left side, then click on behavior, and then click on engagement. And that'll end up giving you session duration information, right? So if your session duration per page is over two minutes, you're doing really well. If it's under that, you may want to consider improving it. Now, not all pages should have two minutes. For example, checkout pages and conversion related pages probably should have lesser duration than pages that are informational. But if your average site is over two minutes, you're doing quite well. And if it's not, right, just continually work on that. Internal link, uh, improve the user experience, improve the content, maybe add videos like we described above, test out podcasts and audio files, test different things out. You also want to look at your bounce rate. If your bounce rate is really high, it means that people are bouncing off. The higher bounce rate, the shittier traffic's gonna be. Look at my bounce rate. I figured out how to decrease it over time. And when you decrease it, your rankings go up. It's really that simple. The biggest thing that I found that impacts bounce rate is page speed. If your site loads slow, your bounce rate just drastically decreases. The more you optimize your page speed, the more uh, lower of a bounce rate you're gonna have. So really work on your page speed. And you can go to Google Analytics, behavior, page timings, average page load times. It'll tell you how long it takes to load up each and every single page. The quicker it loads up, the lower your bounce rate's gonna be. And if you also wanna improve your page speed, go to Google, uh, and you can just either type in this URL in your browser, or you can just Google page speed. It'll be the first result, it'll be a tool. You pop in your URL and you get something that looks like this, right? Look at me on the right monitor. I'm just like, my head is popping out. It's like, pop goes the weasel. Okay, so if you think about it, they'll show you errors. Desktop, they'll show you mobile, they'll show you where you need to work. You fix those and your bounce rate will decrease over time. Make sure you also compress your images. If you don't compress your images, you'll notice that over time your bounce rate will go up. So here's some general rules. Zero to 40% bounce rate is good. If you can do that, you're doing amazing. 40 to 60% is okay. Uh, and then 60 to 100% is poor. If you're a brand new website, blog, e-commerce site, I don't care what you have, your bounce rate is probably gonna be 60 to 100%. As you start improving the metrics and building the brand, it'll go down. But really shoot for anything below 50%. If you're below 50%, it's not too shabby. It's hard to get a bounce rate under 40%. Now, with your meta tags, I mentioned a bit about this earlier. You want to improve your click-throughs, right? Remember, if everyone clicks on the second listing instead of the first listing, what's going to happen? The second listing is going to take the first one's spot. So, so just some general rules, right? You want to optimize for click-through, and you want to make sure that your 
title tag and meta description have the right keywords and phrases and is so appealing that everyone wants to click on your stuff over the competitors. You could look at uh, general ads, people who are using AdWords, for the keywords you're trying to rank for. Because the way AdWords work is, it looks at click-through rate, part of their formula, to decide how much they're going to charge people. So if your AdWords you know, campaign has amazingly high click-through rate, your cost per click is lower. So look at the top position AdWords ads. They tend to have the best copy and maybe incorporate some of those elements within your own title tag. So with you know, your title tags, few general rules. Uh, optimal length for your meta description is 160 characters. Avoid duplicate meta descriptions and titles. Uh, Google doesn't always use your description and that's okay. Add your keywords so Google bolds it, right, when you do a search. So if I Google Neil Patel, they're going to Google Neil Patel within my you know, description. If you also look at rankings versus CTR, the first spot typically gets uh, 30, 35, 30, 35 uh, CTR, uh, CTR, like somewhere around there, I think it's like 32 or something like that. Okay, and once you start going down from there, it drastically drops. So the second spot has like 15%, the, you know, or a bit lower than that. Then the third spot has below 10% and it keeps going down and down. And the, the reason I'm a bit flustered while I'm breaking down this slide on my laptop next to me, I'm trying to Google uh, one of the tests that I'm doing right now to see what my click-through rates are because from this, some of the keywords that I'm ranking for, I'm number two. And I'm looking on my screen. I'm not able to share both. But my CTR on some of my second positions are roughly you know 30%. That means I'm going to outrank other people. Now, granted, the rates, you know, when you're looking at this, it, it's within these two windows. So the blue line is for head term. The yellow line is for long tail terms. The long tail terms always have a higher click-through rate, long tail being like online marketing guide. Head terms tend to be online marketing. When it gets really generic like that, your click-through rate just ends up going down and down and down for super generic terms. But the more long tail it is, the better off you are. But I'm looking at some of my campaigns here, and I have head terms that are getting above 20% for the second spot. But it's because I'm continually improving my click-through rate, and I'm putting in the keywords at the beginning of my title tags. I'm doing things like using persuasive copy, which I'll teach you throughout the next coming weeks. So here's the example, right? Let's say you're ranking for any term. You can see where your click-through rate is for any specific term, and you can measure it over a period of 28 days and see how you're continually improving. The goal is to always increase it. The more you improve it and increase it, the better your rankings are going to be over time. So a general rule with your site, you need to make sure it's mobile friendly. I can't emphasize this enough. I know this sounds really silly, but like, how many of you really look at your own site on a mobile phone. Most people I talk to always check off their site on a desktop computer or laptop. Why not on a mobile phone? More people are using mobile phones than they are using desktops these days, right? Like you're on your phone so much, you need to make sure everything works on a mobile phone. Make sure your design is responsive. Use the AMP framework by Google. This ensures that your page is super high quality for mobile users and they're like just caching it on their end, they're giving you a priority, they're highlighting these uh, people are using their AMP technology and you will get more clicks over time in the short run, maybe not, but in the long run, yes. Your website has to load super fast, if it loads slow for mobile, you're going to get crushed. Your design UX needs to be simple and don't use Splash, I know Adobe loves Splash, but they created that shit. Splash sucks for everyone else. So site structure. And I understand there are reasons for Flash, but I just hate it because I'm an SEO. So site structure. You need to link your pages in super detailed together. If you do that, your rankings will climb up. That's how you get site links. Like if I type in Quick Sprout, you'll notice that I have site links. Why? It's because I'm continually cross-linking. If I wasn't cross-linking, I wouldn't have site links. The other thing with Google is they understand what pages are important when you're linking to them from your home page and other important areas of your site. And site links also helps 
with user experience. People can Google your brand name. They can figure out what area of your site to just go to first. So make sure you have a really nice site structure. Here's an example of how most people have a site structure on the left side. That's not how you want to have a site structure. That's the old way. The right way is the correct way. You can use draw.io to create it. And the reason I say that's the new way is because, you know, it's not just one page linked to one page and then three pages. Sometimes the pages link to more pages and they link sideways instead of just down. They all go through many different ways and they cross link, right? And you can see that with the right arrows, a lot of them are cross linking to each other. And that's because this is the new way of doing stuff. It's not just doing it the old way and just being like, oh, okay, this is it. And, you know, I'm just going to link without cross linking. It just doesn't work. So, some action items for you. Here's some more uh, PDFs. So, one, there's an SEO factors worksheet. I want you to download all of that. In Google Search Console, there's a slide here. I'm going to go back to it. Go to Google Search Console, log in, click search traffic, search analytics, and you will see your top 50 pages. You may have to click on the pages radio icon, and you'll get the top 50 pages. I want you to export this in an Excel sheet. I also want you to go to Google Analytics like I showed you and export your top most uh, pages that load slow, right? Look at your top pages that are popular as well and export the page speeds for those too. Also look at your slowest loading page speeds and then work on fixing those. So those are some action items for you. The number three you get from Google Analytics. Number two you get from Google Search Console. Number one you get from our console system. So 